this is an important bill that we uh, we work together a bipartisan bill that uh, Jared and I work together on and we feel it's very important that what has transpired past summer was that all child care centers entered into the Keystone Stars program but to help those and parents with their kids and decisions where to go and what to do with uh, the Keystone Stars program. We thought that it should be displayed properly and put on websites and, and made visible to, uh, to our uh, parents to make that tough decision of where they want to go and what they want to do and what daycare they want to uh, put their children into. And with this four-star program, by posting this, putting it in a window and putting it on uh, onto our um, uh, websites, I think it gives them an idea of what kind of quality daycare they are putting their children in at this point in time. So we want to make these decisions, or we want to help these these decision makers to make their, a better decision for their children. Uh, you know, my daughter is a uh, school teacher, and she's always at me and, and talking to me about what she'd like to see and where money should go. And she always says, "Tom, if you're going to do this, please, please put money into." pre-K. This is where it makes the difference right up front and I think we really need to, to get that done. So the better we are with these daycares, the more we can help them get reach their, their uh, four-star accomplishments, I think the better off we're going to be as a society and the better off that these children are going to be and prep for when they get into school. So we're, we're really excited about that. Um, in this, uh, we also have uh, a couple things that, you know, these four-star programs, uh, I've talked to daycares and I've been able to, uh, to discuss how, the, how they feel about it, where they want to be. They said it is a, a tough task to meet that. Uh, we have some things like their rating awards are based on staff education, learning environment, leadership management, and family and community partnerships. You know, those are kind of easy, but there's some other things that we want to work on. So uh, Representative Solomon and myself are going to go out, we're going to go into our districts, we're going to meet some of the best daycares and some that, that need help, some of those that want, you know, want the help and, and to reach that, that higher quality daycare system. So we're going to do that. But going back to that is we really feel that it's not just child care. It's about learning. It's about putting your child into the best environment possible. And I think when we do this, again, it is just so much better. I know, you know, for new mothers to let their child with someone, uh, you know, and making sure that they, their baby that's made 13, 15 weeks old, uh, we want to make sure that they, are, that they know that they are, their child is being taken care of properly throughout the day, whether they're at work or wherever they are at, so that child is, is, is taken care of in the proper manner. So I'd like to turn this over to my good friend and, and Representative Jared Solomon right now, and uh, he'll give a couple remarks and has some displays here he'd like to share with us. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Jared Solomon from the 202nd Legislative District, which is in Northeast Philadelphia. When I was growing up, I was raised by a single mom. And I was very fortunate because my mom was a school teacher. And also, she had family all around me when I was growing up. So before kindergarten, uh, we were living with my great-grandmother at the time. When my mom would go to school to teach, my great-grandmother would take care of me. Or if my great-grandmother wasn't available, my grandparents, who were a few blocks away, would take care of me. So we had a built-in network, so, which provided me with emotional development, security, and also, because my mom was a public school teacher, she was on my great-grandmother and grandparents to ensure that they were meeting certain benchmarks, because she was also a special ed teacher. So that she would, every day, make sure that there were lessons moving until when I was in kindergarten. When I was in kindergarten, I was ready to hit the ground running. Unfortunately, for a lot of kids throughout the Commonwealth, and in my district in particular, that is not the case. Let me just use my district as an example. In my district, there are 76 daycares, child cares. Now, these child cares have, have come in my district, particularly after 2009, 
on. There's been an explosion along the business corridors of my district. Keystone Stars rates these child cares. You get a one to a four star. Octel developed this program, pioneering work coming out of our Commonwealth beginning in 2003. We've led the country in this program, rating quality. Quality, um, not just convenience and cost in childcare, but quality. So in my district, out of the 76 child cares, only three, three have four stars. So when a parent is looking for the best option for their child, that's problematic. Because again, while convenience and cost are important, quality is critical. And that's where our bill comes in, to specifically focus on that decision on quality of care. So our bill requires that the number of Keystone stars be placed on a website or in a window, a display that public going by car or walking by can see. So let me just give you an example. So if a family is going by a daycare in a car or just walking by and they're looking for a child care. Now look at this. Easy, stars, everyone knows stars, right? Movie ratings, um, ratings of restaurants, it's simple, it's crisp. And this has been one of the issues, that while we have the child care system, Keystone Stars, the issue has been that no one knows what this means. What is, what is stars? It's very confusing. But what we're doing here is stars relate specifically to quality. And here, if a parent's going by this facility, four stars, we're going in. We know we're safe. We know outcomes are probably going to be good for, for my child. Now, let's say that's not the case. Look at this one. One star. We've got a problem. So a family that's looking at a one star childcare should enter with caution. Not to say they won't, won't uh, enroll their child, but they need to do more of an investigation. And that's why this would be in a public facing window or on the website. And you have, so the parent could follow up with all the information about the child care. In addition, let's say they still need more information about the STAR program or want to follow up with the DHS or um, Department of Education. All their information is right there on the poster very easily accessible, approachable for a family. What is, I think, great is not only the outcome of, of this work, but how it was, was done. So Representative Mehafi, who took the lead on this work, a bipartisan effort, Republican, Democrat, from do, two different parts of the Commonwealth, but also when we developed this legislation, we made sure to vet it through all the stakeholders. So Octel, PCCY, DeVacy, who's going to speak to us today, uh, Northeast CCIS, all provided input in crafting the legislation. And what's nice is Republican, Democratic stakeholders all pointed towards the same goal in providing the best possible child care for our kids throughout the Commonwealth. Thanks so much. It's a privilege now to present um, Tyrone Scott from DeVace, who's going to talk about some, some aspects of the bill and also his personal experience, how he got into this work. Thank you. Thanks so much. Tyrone. Good morning, everyone. I think it's very important to note that this bill actually started many, many years ago with a dream of the STARS Advisory Board that I was a part of. We had a uh, hope that families would understand Keystone Stars because they would have to see the stars listed at every facility they went to. I was lucky enough to meet Representative Solomon at a Chamber of Commerce event, uh, I want to say a day or two after the election when you were still Representative-elect. And 
he was gracious enough to say to me, as soon as my office is set up, let's talk. He and I sat down with some providers in his district, and I informed him of the lack of quality, unfortunately, that was in his district. And he seemed to understand very quickly that this is something we must work on. He put together a team of many stakeholders to say, what would this look like? And this bill was, went through a couple different iterations. We had to make sure that, one, we were being fair to all providers who are providing uh, child care now. We wanted to make sure that they were represented fairly. We wanted to make sure that families would have a chance to understand what was going on. One of the major changes uh, that actually happened in this bill is that it became more inclusive. Uh, to the credit of both of the gentlemen behind me, they decided that this would not be something that just focused on centers. Um, that would be something that would be unfair to rural populations where there are much more family providers. So any provider who is licensed now has a, would have a rating should this bill go through. I think what's important to remember is that we're not just talking about star ratings for the sake of a nebulous one through four. We're talking about people's children and how they're affected. I came to go, be in this work because of an unfortunate incident in a licensed facility when I was three years old. I was electrocuted. Um, like most three-year-olds, I was curious, and I found that a paperclip and Kool-Aid made a great little uh, poking device for an electric socket. Um, when I had hair, it all stuck on end, and I was rushed to the hospital. Um, I still bear scars on my hands that remind me every day of how important this work is. So as we talk about informing families, as we talk about providing um, child care teachers an opportunity to show that they are highly qualified, as we talk about providing the general public with this information, and, and I couldn't have said it better, that this is not just about care, but about education of young children. It's important that we have something like this where people can see one, two, three, four, very simple. I am someone who will care and educate your child. So just in closing, I want to say the whole process was one of outreach to the community, outreach um, across party lines, and outreach to families who want to understand what this system means. I applaud you both and thank you both for your work on this, on this effort. Thank you, Tyrone. Um, so at this point, I, I'm open to any questions. If uh, Jared, myself, or Tyrone can answer them, we'd be glad to do so. Uh, if there are no questions, that's okay, too. Sure. Uh, have you guys engaged with uh, the committee chairman or leadership to make sure that this is something that will be a priority item? We, we have spoke to both chairman, uh, Chairwoman uh, Watson and uh, Chairman Conklin. Uh, they weren't able to, to join us today, but they both did sign on to the bill and they are interested in it. Uh, when we met with Chairman Watson, of course, it's all about the kids. Uh, her, her expertise in, in children and youth have been uh, great for us as far as what she, uh, she put into this. She also helped us uh, craft this uh, legislation, so we're very happy to uh, have them part of this, and we, uh, we look forward to introducing it and bringing it in front of committee. With creating the signs or the notices, pretty much. Not at this. There should not be a cost factor as far as, or is there some cost factors? So, at at this point, we we don't think so. Octel. So just I should mention, I was remiss to. Th th these would not be the signs. This is our mock-up. Octel would develop the signs, and um, we don't we don't right now have a cost estimate. If there would be any cost at attached to it. Any other questions? I actually, um, um, sure. just as an FYI, um, Opdel currently does provide signs to STARS providers. Um, they're just not currently mandatory. So that I would assume that there wouldn't be a huge increase in costs because those signs are already being printed for folks involved in the STARS program. Thank you, Tyron. I think, you know, to go back to this, how Jared and I came together on this was basically he has some problems in, in his district. Uh, my district is represented extremely well. We have some great four-star programs, three stars. Uh, I just met with uh, and, and gave a citation of 10 years for Discovery Kids, which is one of the premier daycares in the district. Uh, we also have UGrow, which is uh, growing and expanding. Uh, and that's actually my granddaughter went to uh, Discovery Kids and my grandson went to UGrow when they were in pre-K. 
Um, so, you know, those are the things, and, and they've done extremely well. So for me, it's, it's about expanding this and making sure that the quality of care and, and these children are taken care of properly uh, in, in all districts, not just my own, but throughout the whole Commonwealth. So, you know, this is something that uh, really is dear, dear to my heart, and uh, we want to see this proceed forward. So we're, gonna, we're hoping for the best. Any other questions? Okay, well, I guess we'll wrap it up. Again, I'm Representative Tom Mahaffey, and I'm joined with uh, Representative Jared Solomon, and of course, our good friend Tyrone Scott. And uh, I wanna thank you again for showing up, and uh, if you have any questions afterwards, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you.